Um, my name is Sam Sharaf. I'm a, a professor in Cairo University and also former Minister of Transport and former uh, Prime Minister of Egypt. I have a good relation with China. I visit China maybe 15 times. But let me try to go back when I was first uh, introduced to China. When I was Minister of Transport in 2005, I came to visit, visit China. And to be, you know, actually I was expecting just, you know, poor people, you know, running with their blue jackets. And then when I came in 2005, I saw something different, actually. And when I, came, when I went back to Egypt, I told my colleagues and my employees, this country is, is going to be real great. Because I saw that in the young people, I saw that in, in all, even the government, government uh, people I met. So I expected that China will be completely different than the image I thought before. But the real point where I got to know China more, when I came here, or I, I was invited actually in 2014, and I, uh, uh, to give two talks. I remember one in April 2014, and one in October, I believe, in 2014. The first one, about six months, or, or uh, about Months is less than a year after the Build and Road Initiative was uh, issued by President Xi. I gave a talk about the, the BRI, or Bread, uh, Build and Road Initiative, and the second talk was about Chinese dream. Chinese dream. And I read a lot about Chinese dream, and I read the comparison between Chinese dream and other dreams, and as I usually say, I came to study, actually, where they surveyed a quite a number of young people, and they uh, asked them, which dream you expect to last? Is it the American dream, European dream, or Chinese dream? And the majority said, Chinese dream. So I started to think, actually, and the more I read, and the more I hear, and the more I investigate, I found a very close relation between Chinese Dream and the Build and Road Initiative. Chinese Dream was uh, mentioned in uh, President Xi's uh, uh, address before the Build and Road Initiative. And, um, but there is a cl very close relation, and I'm going to talk about that. So Chinese Dream is a core actually point that I'm going to talk about. But let me say that what, why, why, what's a dream? I have a model and actually it's applied to individuals, to groups, societies, countries, and even internationally. The group, I call it ADW, A-D-W, where A stands for assess, means evaluate the present, evaluate the current situation. Dream, D is dream. Nobody should sat the present satisfy you. You should have a dream, okay? And once you have a serious dream, faithful dream, you go to W to work to fulfill it. So that's what happened exactly. That China looked at their unique capabilities and there was a dream and they worked to fulfill it and they still working in that. So when I talk about Chinese dream, there's a lot of things. When I when actually I talk about what happened in the five years uh, or the lately in China, there is a lot. Basically, one simple, if I want to finish my speech in 30 seconds, I say a lot. But let me say that concentrate in some of the basic issues that I feel actually this is our uh, putting China in the right direction. I'm an engineer. I can talk about buildings and, and transportation. And it's amazing. T 
tunnels, roads, bridges. It's good. But what I'm going to talk about is the strong internal. Strong internal. How, what happened? Two things happened is poverty eradication and the middle class. What happened in poverty eradication, I, I attended a lot of meetings about poverty eradication, but uh, uh, from when I came in 2005, the percent of poverty or people under the poverty line was huge. In 2000, now, now there are less than 5% of the Chinese population under the poverty, actually 3 or 4% under the poverty uh, line, and they will be raised above the line by 2020. The second thing is middle class. And let me tell you the middle, what's, what's a middle class? Uh, see, this building, there is a foundation, okay? There is, there is just normal or uh, normal soil. You cannot live on it, okay? And then we have the building. And in between, there is a foundation, the foundation. Also roads. Roads are three layers. The top layer is a nice black layer where vehicles move. And then bottom is the bottom layer, which is a very weak layer. And in between, there is a middle layer. The middle layer is actually supporting the upper layer and protecting the lower layer. This is engineering. Also in, in societies, the stronger the middle class, the stronger the society as a whole. The society is not strong by rich people only, okay? And of course, they are not strong by poor people. So the middle class is actually represent the strength of a community, of a society. And what happened, what happened is under the the pro prosperous society concept in the Chinese dream, that's what happened, is actually strengthening the society through poverty eradication and uh, uh, strengthening the middle class. Middle class, the, the urban population was 19% in uh, 1980. Now it's about or more maybe than 60%, and by 2030 will be approaching 80%. So. This is very. I know there are problems, as Mr. President said, that that uh, problems. It's it's a global pro uh, programs. But I always believe that that a strong inside is good for the inside and good for outside relation. This is a strong. You cannot actually work, you know, unless you're strong inside. Then you can deal with other people. Okay. So that 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 actually very brief description of the Chinese dream and the prosperous society and sustainable development, which is actually, I selected these two issues of middle class and poverty eradication. The other side, as I told you, the Build and Road Initiative. China is a is great nation with deep civilization. And the responsibility of China is to spread outside. So after being or being strong inside, how, how, how we go out? Because it is a responsibility before anything else. So the, the Belt and, and, or BRI, just make it quickly, the BRI actually is a mechanism, is a concept before being a project, a concept that saying that certain amount of people in the world to get together for prosperous uh, uh, society, for social justice, for win, win activities, and so forth. So what happened actually is, is uh, through the BRI, what happened that China carried the responsibility toward the world because 
the, what is happening now under the current globalization is really we are living under hostile globalization, unfair. You know, the, the globalization, this current globalization does not believe in cultural diversity. There are a domination. So there should be a modification for this globalization. How? To get together. The world should get together. And as you know, the Belt and Road Initiative, uh, um, when it was announced until now, there is about 69 countries, 69 countries that showed interest to participate. 69 countries, about 70% of the world's population, and maybe one third or more than one third of, of the, of the uh, world economy. So it is really a power. So what this, what this power can do, they can do to work together, share, not dominate, okay? And they apply, actually, they reach a stage of globalization that is that's required by the humanity. Because what's happening, as I said, it's inhumane. So the Belt and Road Initiative, as I said, it's a concept aiming at spreading the, the, the concept of civilizations. Because I'm talking, because Egypt also is a country with deep civilizations. And I understand that, that a, 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 a globalization that is based on moral values, this is the save. We can save the humanity through that. Because now, as I said, humanity is at a, at a great risk, humanity as a whole. So we should work together for that. Uh, uh, plus, of course, in, um, the, the Belt and Road Initiative is part of, of, of a global mechanisms. And as you know, if you have a globalization, you have to have what we call it global governance. You have to have institutions and mechanisms to run the show. Currently, the mechanisms and the institutions are not fair enough toward the especially develop, developing countries. So what we need is another umbrella that can, we can work together under, under it and apply a better global governance. And that's why the Belt and Road Initiative is not just projects. It is, it is part of a, a global change or global interactions, new interactions, including global uh, 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 governance, including common development, including common security, including common trust between people, including uh, 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 people to people dialogue, including also, of course, of course a better and advanced role for uh, non government organization. So the, the, the concepts, are, what I'm trying to say, that the concepts of the Chinese dream was gradually moved to the BRI movement. This is very, very important. And that's why the world is changing. It will take time, but it's very important to have a new world because now, as I said, we are suffering from a serious risk in the world. You just, just reading the news, you can feel that any time the world can go to a bloody world immediately. Uh, what I, I, I want to also concentrate in is the future. future. And as you know, a uh, few days, few days uh, maybe, uh, no, maybe, I don't know, less than a month, the, the ninth meeting of the uh, CPC will be held in, in, in will be held and I believe that this, this meeting will be the most important meeting and I believe from just, you know, I came to, as I told you, came to China several times and I believe that will be a major change in China's foreign policy. And this is very important. People, uh, imagine the CPC meeting 10 years ago. I believe that the world was not waiting for that. But now everybody in the world is waiting for the results of this meeting because it will shape, it will shape the, the, the future of 
the, 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 the globe. Okay? And we, all of us, are actually waiting for that. We understand China has a problems like everybody else, but it is the responsibility of China as a superpower to, uh, uh, to participate, to share, to actually protect the world from this risky life. Finally, my advice to you, my advice to you, especially young people, believe that you can do. Believe that you can do. You are living in a great nation. Even if some there are some problems, but this is a great nation and you have to carry your responsibility. So dream and work for your dream. This is the only thing that you can do. And uh, uh, just help your government, your party, just to, to fulfill their responsibilities inside and outside. And that ends my talk. Thank you very much.